now it's time for our keynote speaks. So we have a guest from Port Atlantic. Rex Black is the former president of ISGQB, International Software Testing Qualifications Board, which the Turkish Testing Board is also a part. So, welcome, Rex. Delay of release, I think we're all familiar with this problem, right? 
as you get closer to the done date, people start to realize we just can't show this. And then you have opportunity costs associated with that. And if you're in the safety critical business, basically if you make software that makes anything move in the real world, then you have safety critical issues and that's, uh, you know, you're not just talking about losing money, you're talking about hurting people. Now I think the thing that we need to keep in mind is we actually know a lot more about how to do this than you would guess. Uh, I think the capability to build good software quality is out there. And we, we have it. We know that collectively as an industry a lot of things. We just don't do them. We just don't have the discipline. That's why Craig asked me this morning, who's at fault? You didn't ask all of us. And that's where I would have stuck my hand up. We're all, we're all at fault. We don't apply what we know. So, what are some things that I think would be important? Um, I'm going to pick six things just because I don't have so much time. <laughs> I could maybe pick 106, but uh, I think the next six things that I'm going to cover are, are really critical. And if you're not doing these six things on your projects, you're really setting yourself up for quality problems of one sort or another. I'm going to try to use case studies uh, to illustrate both successful and unsuccessful application of these six lessons, these six important things to do for quality. Uh, give you some tips, give you some warnings, and uh, I want to point out that all of these case studies are, are real. These are not hypothetical situations, real world situations, most of which I have first-hand experience with uh, from, from our clients. So, just to lay these out at a high level before I get into the details, good testable requirements. I don't want this we don't always get it. We don't always have it. It's, again, it's a discipline issue. It's not that we don't know how to do this, just that we get in a hurry, we don't have the discipline collectively. Uh, I'm not blaming anyone in this room in particular. Again, I think it's just, this is a, everybody contributes to this. But if you've got good requirements, you get a lot of benefits out of that. Sometimes the benefits can be a surprise, as I'll show you. Uh, Manage quality risk throughout the life cycle. Don't wait until the end. This testing bugs out at the end approach doesn't work. I'm not think, surprising anybody in this room when I say that, but how many projects have you seen where that, that was the main approach to dealing with quality risk? I've seen it over and over and over again. Let's stop doing that. Integration and integration testing. This is, for some reason, something that tends to be underestimated. Uh, teamwork. You're not going to build a quality product if you don't have people working together. You can do everything else right, but if you don't have this part, people working together, you're not going to have a quality product. Similarly, you're not going to have a quality product if your people are incompetent. If they don't have the skills to, to do it, uh, build quality, then you won't get quality. No matter what process you follow. Any of you who have children who have watched your children play sports know exactly what I'm talking about. They're following the same rules as professionals, <laughs> but it sure doesn't look like professionals. Right? So that's a skills issue. And then managing change. Now, there's a lot of talk about, oh, we've got to be agile, we've got to embrace change and so forth. Okay, that's great, but we still have to manage it. So let's take a look at these in a little more detail. I don't think I'm going to be saying anything revolutionary here on this first bullet point. Good, sufficiently detailed, well understood, testable requirements. We've got these, we've got a good foundation for a quality product. And similarly, or conversely, excuse me, that the extent that we don't have these, then we have the beginnings of a software quality problem. And you know, many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the problem of either don't get good requirements or you get requirements but they're missing key characteristics like performance and reliability and then you have all sorts of issues with that at the end. Oh, we forgot to think about this. Now, the interesting thing about requirements is 
they're, they're the obvious benefits of having good requirements, good testable requirements, but we've also seen cases where the benefits were things that you wouldn't even expect, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Um, and we've seen cases, on the other hand, where bad requirements ended up being a source of a lot of unexpected grief. So, I think it's uh, fair to say, if you understand the requirements, you can build quality, and conversely, if you don't, then you can't. It's how would we build something that was fit for use, fit for purpose, one of the definitions of quality, if we didn't know what it was going to be used for, right? I also want to point out something, and for those of you who are working on projects that are applying Agile <coughs> methodologies, Nowhere in the Agile Manifesto does it say no specified requirements. It does not say that. What it says is that they value running software over detailed specifications. See the difference there? That's not the same as saying don't bother to write anything down. And if we see a lot of this with clients that are trying to apply Agile is they take this black and white interpretation of the Agile Manifesto, and one of the things that they say is, oh, we don't have to write anything down. No. What they're saying is, only write down what you need to write down. So that does not excuse project teams from writing down requirements. Okay, so let me give you an example. Case study, long-term costs of bad requirements. We have a plan. If you're good people, they are smart people. And I want to point this out. All the case studies of problems that I'm going to talk about, don't just assume, well, that couldn't happen to us because we're smarter than that. Every one of these case studies of a problem, these people were smart, but they made a mistake. This particular company, medical software company, had very vague requirements. There were a lot of gaps. There were a lot of things that weren't specified. A lot of testability problems, and they didn't manage them. Phone call from their customer in the middle of the project. Go, oh, you know that uh, requirement we had for this, that, and the other thing? Uh, we want to change that now. We want to make that a little different. And the person would just go in and modify the Word document, no change tracking, send it to the programmers. Hey, here's your requirements. Hmm, okay. Maybe people get a little confused. <coughs> yeah, people get confused, developers get confused, and so surprise, surprise, the code isn't very good. Now, what they found after the fact was. There were a lot of data quality problems. Okay, this, is, this program is managing safety critical data related to medical systems. Uh, would it be bad if we had corruption of the data related to people's response to drugs or something like that? Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> and so now they found this out. Oh my god, big panic. They've now spent over $100,000 trying to fix the problem, and you know, more to come. Um, now, they've learned the lesson. They are writing better requirements. And it's better to, to learn the lesson late than never. But, you know, it's a, a uh, near miss, you know, a near death experience for the company. 